Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to Geisha's World War II prostitutes or entertainers made on the On the Home Front playlist. Uh, World of I almost said World World of Warcraft. <laughs> World War II uh, YouTube channel. If you guys want to check out my previous reactions to other videos on the On the Home Front playlist for World War II youtube channel remember the links are going to be in the playlist is going to be at the top here just click on it and be able to access them if you want to check out the original video as well as world war ii youtube channel the links are going to be in the, the description below yes let us start three two one go she is the embodiment of the perfect japanese woman a feminine, restrained posture, flawless manners, and dedication to serving their male customers well. But under the white porcelain makeup of the geisha lies a woman in the crossfire of the struggles against patriarchy. This uh, sorry, sorry, Anna. Um, I just wanted to say yes, I, I know not a lot about uh women who are in the geisha uh you know profession if i can say that um i've seen some animation uh tv animations of of, of geisha women and how they would depict them and and you know the, t the type of services that they offer uh within a establishment and yeah i don't really know much about women who are in the geisha business if i can say that um yeah let's listen to what anna has to say about this this is on the home front a sub-series of world war ii in real time i'm anna deinhardt initially the geisha are well-trained artists in dancing and singing to entertain at parties of well-off men they emerged from the 1629 ban on female public performance when women were driven to private performances venues often situated in pleasure quarters Soon, they became keepers of Japanese tradition, known for their charm and manners. To be trained as a geisha meant social prestige and education some families usually couldn't afford. In their cultural and artistic training, learning how to perform tea ceremonies is central, something they train at the Urasenki School of Tea. Fulfilling many Japanese ideals of feminine beauty added to her popularity and made her a public figure. When magazines become a thing in the 19th century, many publications deal with the geisha world, its members and their newest fashion. But after the First World War, a fresh western breeze sweeps through the Japanese society for a short while, which affects all women's lives, including the geisha. In Tokyo, a short-lived trend occurs. The geisha lose their traditional kimonos and starts dressing in a Western fashion. But the Cooperative Association of the Geisha has just become a national organization. They find this new trend incompatible with the geisha image, and its guidelines quickly bring the geishas back down to earth. To be a geisha, it now becomes obligatory to wear traditional Japanese clothing and dedicate themselves to the traditional arts. This causes many women to give back their license and try their success as barmaids or jazz singers. The new Japanese woman is a product of the struggle against a repressive state but does not have a real impact on women's position in Japanese society. The Taisho era of the 20s gives men universal voting rights. But women's vote does not follow. The rising self-awareness of women is seen as a threat to male sexual entitlement. Japanese tradition not only gives men the right to intercourse with one's wife, prostitution is an equally important right. The marriage... Prostitution is a right? Oof. Yeah, no, the system in Japan during those times was extremely patriarchal and misogynistic um and the fact that you know there were women who did not want to necessarily follow the traditions of how a geisha woman should be presented and how she should act and how she should dress and what she should be able to do and you know they went out their own way uh, to become as independent as possible 
you know, becoming singers, becoming, uh, you know, fashion models, uh, doing all these other things that don't necessarily toe the line of what is expected of a woman who is uh, in the entertainment industry in Japan. Um, and the fact that that doesn't really have an impact in society as, you know, some of us would expect it would, but it didn't have it in Japan, uh, which is quite surprising as well. Hmm. Bet is only meant to produce airs, while fun is reserved for brothels and comparable venues. So somehow they've separated sex for fun and sex for, you know, producing children. I don't. Yeah, this is this is very complicated for me. I don't know. Maybe for you guys, you'll understand it quite simply but for me i just can't see it that way you know i mean if i have a partner you know i love being with that partner i want to have sex with that partner because i enjoy uh my partner i enjoy my partner's company and uh, should children come out of it then it's it, it's good you know it's something that we wanted to uh you know get as a as a as a as, as a family you know but then to then separate it and say, no, I only have sex with you because I want uh, children for the family's continuation. And then I'll have sex with other people for fun. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. You know. Huh. Maybe. Maybe because it's arranged marriages, maybe. Maybe they have arranged marriages and they don't like each other. And therefore the man can, you know, is fulfilling his duties and then he goes out there to have fun with other women. Uh, yeah, it's beyond me. With a long tradition in Japan, brothels are legalized in federal legislation in 1900. But they are a thorn in the sides of the women's movement, which pursues restrictions on arranged marriages, alcohol, concubine possessions and prostitution. Their struggle for autonomy forms the image of a new Japanese woman who is freedom-loving and self-determined in her sexuality. Nevertheless, in the Taisho years, the prostitution sector expands even more as the male demand for paid sex escalates further. Now, there is a wide variety of venues to buy sex, like the Ginza-type cafes, where the waitresses sell kisses and intermingle with the customer in a sexual way for money. Here, the self-determined working woman becomes a sexual object even more desirable for men to possess. Now, a first-class geisha is not a regular prostitute because she won't just sleep with anyone who pays. That said, part of a geisha's training is the deflowering, which men pay high sums for. Sayo Mizuda describes how her first time is sold to four different men one after the other. The mother would teach me all the virgin-like gestures I was to make. I just kept quiet and bent to her will. But once a girl has made her debut, the geisha house mother and the geisha rescue office fixes her up with her patron, Adana. But many venues now shift their focus to the customer's sexual needs. The geishas and spas and recreation spots are especially famous for only having minor artistic skills and mostly selling sex. In 1927, the poet Hagiwara Sakutaru writes about increasing prostitution at geishas' venues. If I hear someone say he's going off to see a geisha, that can only mean one thing nowadays. Geishas are not companions of the mind, they are companions of the body. It's too bad if geishas are called high-class prostitutes, but that, in fact, is what they have become. New geisha trainees are now partly recruited through illegal brokers. They lure girls, mostly from the countryside, into the venues by disguising as rickshaw drivers or by promising them factory work. They are then manipulated into taking on a debt to buy kimonos or send money back to their parents, a debt that now ties the woman to the venue and obliges them to work off the sum. 
it's almost like sex trafficking, you know. Uh, even in our modern era times, uh, young girls and boys uh, who search out in the big cities looking for work, you know, they get promised big successes or big working opportunities only to find that they're being abducted and they're going to be sent across the oceans uh, to a different country where they will be sold as, uh, you know, sex objects in brothels and, and other types of establishments. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of like sex trafficking. And yeah, it's just sad, really. It's very, very sad. Hmm. In 1927, 80,086 women are prostituted in geisha venues. 80,000? 12% of which are between 14 and 17. To get to these underage girls, the brokers and geisha venues use adoption contracts. They pay the girls' parents money and promise years of artistic and cultural training for their daughters. In 1929, the global depression hits Japan, and in 1934, a mass crop failure strikes Japan's northern prefectures. Poverty among countryside families increases enormously. This makes women and girls even more vulnerable to traffickers and brokers who offer loans in exchange for enslaving daughters and female relatives. The Great Depression also puts a damper on social progress, even though the female suffrage movement struggles on for a short while. The fight for the vote peaks in 1931, when the government sponsors a bill to give women full suffrage. It passes the lower house of parliament, but is defeated in the house of peers. The country... The house of peers? What house is that? Is that like uh, the upper house of parliament? Okay. Is now caught in a spiral of increasing radical political tendencies. Military powers gain more and more influence and shape the Japanese emperor's decision through advisors. The annexation of Manchuria in 1931 and the invasion of China in 1937 means that the country is at war. Married women are now expected to do their part by providing for the old, young and ill and to keep the house while the men are away at war. The geisha also struggle for social survival. The publicity is shrunk to a minimum and they are rarely invited as acts at official state events. The war effort soon demands that more and more unmarried women go to the factories. Opportunities for vocational training for women increase and soon parents only rarely give the daughters away to become traditional geisha, causing many venues to close in the 30s. When the Pacific War starts with Japan attacking Pearl Harbor, women in general are called to action. Irie Hisai, who lost her husband on the China front, describes in her diary what is expected of her. Weeping was unforgivable for the wives of Japan. The only time I could cry without reproach was when I was in bed with my child. As the war drags on, younger and younger girls are drafted into the labor force for military industrial production. Even schoolgirls younger than 13 years old will find death in the most dangerous forms of war labor. Geisha are not spared from joining the labor force, as with most men away at the front, many venues have to shut down. But some geisha manage to cater to the remaining, richer customers right until the last years of the war. Even though tea houses, geisha houses and bars are ordered to close, up to 9,000 geisha will still entertain in 1944. The author Tokuda Shusei describes the reasons for this in his 1941 novel, A World in Miniature. With the reassertion of truly Japanese tastes, the geisha venues had regained their former prosperity, benefiting greatly from a booming war economy, and from the busy socializing of the upper classes, who favored establishments with their banquets and parties. Many women from geisha venues are also trafficked into the Japanese comfort stations for soldiers on the front. Often they are persuaded by the promise of being relieved from their debt after one year of service, most of them have been prostituted since childhood. The years of sexual abuse have already severely harmed the women who fill the comfort stations during the war. It doesn't get better there. Doctors who examine them list the many injuries, broken bones, 
bruises, reproductive complications, hepatitis, syphilis, psychological hardships including depression, stress disorders, suicidal thoughts and self-mutilation. The women's movement in 1920s Japan suffers a strong headwind that is reflected on the high increase of the prostitution sector. In a declining economy, the geisha, once aspiring female artists, the embodiment of the Japanese image of a perfect woman, slide even further into prostitution and dependency. When war comes, the geisha who don't end up in the factories are often compelled to prostitute themselves to the frontline soldiers. The struggle against patriarchy that for a while even raged behind the perfect facade of the geisha is like so many other human values lost to the war. To understand more about how crazy complicated the Japanese government was, click right here. The Time Ghost Army is what keeps our efforts running. Sign up on Patreon or timeghost.tv. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Yes, guys, that is it with Geisha's World War II prostitutes or entertainers made on the World War II YouTube channel. Um, yeah, before I start, I have to say that Anna's, you know, hair style that she made there, she, she looks really good. Really, she looks really cool. Um, okay, yes, uh, getting back to this video, uh, it is sad what happened to this uh profession if i can call it that you know being a geisha where it was a profession where tradition was kept alive uh, not only in terms of ceremonies or the clothing uh, the women wore but also in terms of the infrastructure you know in terms of the tea houses or other establishments where geisha women would uh, you know be working in uh, it had a very authentic uh, Japanese style of of building and uh, you know rooms and other types of utensils and you know from the smallest things to the biggest things they would make it as authentic as possible uh, a real Japanese cultural uh, center of entertainment you know and then it got corrupted it became uh, you know used for other nefarious needs prostitution mainly and from that uh, Pandora's box opening came in other criminal activities in terms of uh, taking young children to become geishas, um, uh, trafficking people to become geishas, uh, blackmailing them, financially blackmailing them, uh, you know, selling or should I say acquiring or buying, you know, poor people of their family members, the young daughters or aunts or, or, or sisters, taking them off to become geishas. Uh, and really, it is so sad. It's very, very sad what happened uh, during those times. And like I said before, this institution or this uh, business was mainly centered around preservation of the culture, preservation of, uh, you know, Japanese uh, lifestyle, if I can say that. And it has been corrupted in becoming a prostitution uh, ring and uh, you know where 80,000 women uh, mainly also young children being sent there to become uh, you know prostitutes for all these men uh, it, it's just this is really so wrong and so sad and also in terms of the comfort women I cannot understand why would they do something like this why would they be sending women off to the battlefields to 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 entertain the soldiers in such a manner you know it, it's not as if they're going there to sing and dance and then they come back to japan no they're there to be prostitutes uh, uh to be sex workers for for these uh men in 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 the in the army and it, it's just really it's just so wrong and all the things that these women have been suffering mentally, physically, you know, with their bodies. I I don't even know if they were even com compensated for all that has been done to them, you know. Yes, we've been told that they're going to be paying off their debt, whatever debt that they have incurred in Japan. 
and you know they have to go to these comfort women camps to pay it off but really it's just this is horrible this is so horrible um and also the fact that you know the government of japan well should i say that the lower parliament the lower house of parliament uh wanted things to change slowly but surely however the upper house of parliament uh you know blocked any kind of measure that would uh, bring out the emancipation of women uh, and probably economic and social mobility of women included but the upper house of parliament uh, kept on blocking it uh, i suspect it has to deal with patriarchy it has to deal with misogyny it has to deal with these ultra nationalist uh, people who want to keep this tradition this culture alive no matter what the cost at whatever detriment to society for as long as this culture uh, continues to exist and yeah it's just sad really this is very very sad what was happening during those times um, i wonder how is it like right now you know i know that there are still geisha establishments in japan i'm just wondering um, is it purely now just entertainment uh, you know preservation of culture or do they still also dabble into that uh, side of uh, you know sexual entertainment if i could say that yeah i'm just wondering i'll have to look that up on the internet um, but yeah this was very interesting to uh, know about and guys that is it remember if you want to check out the original video as well as World War II's YouTube channel. The links are going to be in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos, and I'll see you guys next week. Okay? Bye-bye.